The defense headquarters says Air Task Force of Operation Lafia Dole has destroyed compound housing some high-profile Boko Haram terrorist leaders at Garin Maluma. It said this has led to the killing of some of the leaders and their fighters at a town on the fringes of the Sambisa Forest in Bonu State. The coordinator of Defense Media Operations, Major General John Eneche, made the disclosure in a statement on Thursday in Abuja. NHA said this was achieved through massive airstrikes executed to mark the launch of Operation Longreach, a new subsidiary operation that commenced on June 16. To give us more perspective on Buhari's dissatisfaction over the activities of the heads of security agencies is a security consultant and expert, Colonel Ola Majeo Yebe, retired. Thank you very much for joining us. Yes, thank you. Good morning. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can. Good morning. What is your reaction uh, to the president's displeasure with the service chiefs, especially when you back that up with all the concerns um, about the tenor of these men? Okay, well, first, don't forget that the president himself uh, is a veteran of many battles. And uh, take it or leave it, the president has a way of being very forthright. Uh, it is dealing even with the uh, service chiefs. I agree with the president that it has become mandatory for the service chiefs and their other colleagues to step up their game. I believe that the displeasure expressed by the president is well placed. Don't forget that he said that he is aware the service chiefs and other commanders are doing a lot of work. So all that he has said now is that their best is not good enough. And I agree with that because the stage of violence has become just too high and unacceptable. I am confident that with this court right directive to the service chiefs and other commanders, we are going to see more action in the engagement of the criminals who are trying to make living in Nigeria like living in hell. What? Therefore, going forward, we are going to see changes in strategy and tactics, changes in the attitude of the operatives in combat. Therefore, I believe that it will not be long before we begin to notice welcome developments in the battle against criminals in Nigeria. Um, uh Kuno, let me interject and ask that over the months, there's been concerns about the tenor of these service chiefs. Isn't it time that the president consider the consideration being asked for? This might, in some way, some have said, rejig, help rather, to rejig the architecture as it is today. Well, my position on this matter is already in the public domain. Those who are asking for the replacement of the service chiefs and other senior commanders have a valid point. But my own argument has always been that they do not have all the facts. And if the service chief must go because of the reverses we have in the security operations. Um, why do we think that that is what will bring 
the positive change that we are expecting. My people, the young ones, have a proverb that if you have a headache, you do not put on the head as a solution. I believe that we just do not have all the facts that the president has. And we must give him the liberty to perform the duty of that office. The seventies will not make public all that they tell the president. And so, uh, to come from outside of the armed forces and without having all the information that the president has, uh, I do not think it is appropriate to insist. All right. M moving on now, sir. Let's let's look at the complaints that was released recently. We saw some videos of officers uh, saying they don't have adequate supplies to, you know, take on the fight against the insurgency and other crimes in the country. Um, don't you think that, or should I rephrase the question and say, do you believe that the army, the uh, the soldiers at the forefront, don't have what they need to take on this battle, and government should do more? Well, I do not have any information about the shortage in supplies of weapons and ammunition. But I believe that that challenge is not widespread. And I'm not going to get into an argument about that because I simply do not have the facts. But if that is the case, then the work must go back to the office of the president because the procurement of arms and weapons depends on what the federal government makes available. So you see, if they are given enough weapons and, in fact, everything else that they need, I believe they will do very well. In your expert opinion, sir, do you think there is certain aspects in this uh, fight that the military might be missing and needs to refocus on? Yes, again, I can only express my own opinion in the light of my experience on active service. But again, I'm not trying to beg the question. I do not have all the facts. However, we have been at this uh, going up to the 11th year now. So those involved in combat need to revise the tactics they are adopting. Don't forget that they have one major challenge, and that is adequate, real-time, actionable intelligence. And since the terrorists, particularly in the Northeast, move very rapidly, they have no uniforms, they have no barracks, so they can show up anywhere at any time. So, so we now require ac accurate, timely, actionable intelligence more than perhaps any other thing. Let's take into consideration the reality on the ground now, and that's the situation with the COVID-19. At the onset of this, um, just before it was declared a pandemic and everybody uh, got on their feet, there, was, there seemed to be um, an abating of crimes and you know, insurgency across the country. But that seemed to have picked up as an accelerated um, 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 level. Uh, what is your take on how the pandemic is affecting the fight on, um, on crime and insurgency in this country? This is my position on the matter. To start with, I noticed that when COVID-19 hit Nigeria, all attention was focused on the 
save he as first. What do I mean? People are being told what to do to avoid being infected. The country was locked down. But at that time, nobody gave thought to the fact that if you lock down the country that the way that you have done, then criminals find it much easier to move. In other words, thought of to have been given to the fact that the lockdown will create security problems. And that is what we saw happening. Area boys in Lagos and other large cities. Robbers being able to move rapidly from one point or the other. I think learning from that experience, the security men will factor into their plans the fact that robbers, terrorists, insurgents, now have the advantage of moving rapidly from one point to the other because traffic is very light. But there are supposed to have been um, a whole lot of restrictions on movement, yet we have these um, uh, crimes. So quickly, sir, in 30 seconds, if you can, um, what will be your suggestion um, to the military right now with the pandemic on the fight against uh, crime? Number one, they must improve the means of communication that they have because criminals are able to move very fast. If communication is effective, when the criminals, whether they are soldiers or terrorists or whoever, are moving, the security men have the facility to inform the security agents in the direction of where the criminals are trying to escape to or to carry out their nefarious activities. So the number one thing will be very, very effective and reliable communication. All right, uh, Cornel Madioyegbe, thank you very much uh, for your insights on the news this morning. It's appreciated. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you too.